the Labor MP Pat Conroy and Liberal MP Jason Flinsky. Thanks both of you for joining us. Jason, I might start Hi, with you. Hi, Hello you. there, how are you? Now, why is this expected to be so close? Michael Daly, Labor's leader, hasn't been in the job for long. There's good jobs in New South Wales, the economy is good, there are lots of infrastructure pr um, projects underway. But the, the result itself is expected to be so tight. Why? Well, you're right, Joe. It shouldn't be tight. It should be, um, you know, clearly a very clear win for a great government that's doing a great job. Um, but, you know, democracy is in the hands of the people. They get to make their minds up about this. I think there is a larger problem in Australian democracy these days, which is, without getting all Aaron Sorkin on everyone, where people are not getting the information they used to get from the media. So we've seen in this last week, uh, it's been a bit of a uh, week from hell, as it's been described, for the Labor leader. Um, but, you know, some of the media have not covered that, I think, appropriately or properly. So his comments about Asians with PhDs taking people's jobs, his inability... I mean, he's only had four policies in this election campaign. His inability to know the difference between $3 billion and $64 million, to understand what Gonski funding is versus CapEx funding... All issues that were over by the and over and get, Well, no, they weren't. And, I, I mean, I hate to be critical of the ABC because I'm sitting here, but you know his comments about Asians with PhDs were covered by the ABC with the lead of, oh, he was trying to explain an economic issue. I mean, if a Liberal politician, if Gladys Berejiklian had made those comments, can you imagine we'd still be talking about it today? We've had revelations during <laughs> Jason, this campaign. Just, just in our defence, I did talk about it today. I've already put a question, question about it earlier on in but the show. But Josh, chat. I mean, you know, Radio National covered that story. Um, about and turn it into a discussion about the economic issues facing New South Wales. Isn't like, that what Conservatives had, are always asking no, the no, ABC to do, to no, take seriously right-wing concerns well, instead that's fine. of dismissing Then them. I'm actually asking the ABC to deal with both political parties even-handedly. Okay. So we had this week... No, no, I'm concerned. We had this week Walad Ali accused the Prime Minister of Liz, uh, Islamophobia. There is no evidence of that, and every major actor has come out who was in the room has said that's the opposite of what he did. Yet that has gone on all week. We have a Labor leader going to a private meeting in a pub in the Blue Mountains and accusing Asians of taking people's jobs, and the media has really gone very soft on okay, that. OK, well, we are covering it this morning, so we're well, here to I'm, talk about the New I'm, South Wales election. Covered, yeah, okay. Pat Conroy, I might go to you um, now. Michael Daly did have particularly a shocker of a week uh, this last week gone by. Um, what do you make of his last week of campaigning? Oh, well, look, there's been a couple of unfortunate stories out there, but this is a classic case from Jason and the Liberals where it's a tight election, so they blame the people and blame the media rather than the fact that they've done nothing for eight years. They've had three premiers in eight years. They haven't opened. They haven't completed a single major infrastructure project. They've mismanaged light rail. They've privatised everything that wasn't nailed down. And ultimately, we've got school students right now who go to schools that don't have air conditioning, that are sweltering in 40-degree days when they're knocking down a perfectly good st stadium that could have been fixed for $18 million, we found out yesterday. So the stadium's issue does resonate because it shows how out of touch this government is. They put their mates on the SEG Trust above looking after school students in my area, in the regions, in the western suburbs of Sydney. And that's why this election will be tight, because Gladys and her crew don't care about the people of New South Wales. Pat, uh, this has been one of the most aggressive governments in terms of building infrastructure. Are you sure that the, the argument that they haven't uh, been in investing enough in infrastructure is one that is going to win people over? Well, will, you, will you name a single actual project they've opened or completed? Well, if, 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 you, if, you, if you were very audacious projects, and you launched at, a lot of big at, projects, at, then you wouldn't expect no, them no, to turn around very quickly, no, would no. you? Well, 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 Josh, let me answer your question. They've been in power for eight years. In eight years, you think they'd finish a, a single project. They haven't. The light rail project in Sydney has been a disaster. They promised to open eight schools every year of their eight years in government. They've opened 12 schools in an eight, eight-year term instead of 64 schools. They're knocking down a perfectly good stadium. They're great at mismanaging infrastructure projects, are hopeless at actually finishing them. And ultimately, constituents in my area, in the Hunter, in regional New South Wales, and in the mortgage belt of Sydney are suffering because this government is all talk 
a no action. And that's why this election is close. Jason, is Pat right there speaking about infrastructure projects which are ongoing, but there have been a lot of issues with the light rail. Obviously, there's been a lot of backlash for the stadiums. Is this a problem of selling the message or what's going on with mm. the infrastructure? So what Pat's saying is absolutely and completely outrageous. Um, in 16 years, the Labor Party announced 29 transport projects and cancelled 32. We're still looking for the three that they double cancelled. Um, this government has is now in the um, midst of a $130 billion infrastructure project. He can point to one project, which is light rail. All that Michael Daly has been able to talk about for the last three, four, five months is stadiums and light rail because he's got no policies on health, he's got no policies on education, he's got no policies on transport or on policing. The Labor Party are bereft of ideas. They're bereft of ideas federally, they're bereft of ideas at a state level. This government has done more to That's actually improve the lives of people than any other government in the history of New South Wales, following, without doubt, I mean, a government that was described as as bad as the rum core by the Independent Commission Against Corruption. That's what we've seen today. Now, you can point to the light rail. It was built down the oldest street in Sydney. It was always going to find you know, things under that road. It was always a difficult project. But you have to focus on that if you're being critical, because it ignores the other $127 billion worth of infrastructure that's being built. We've opened 170 schools. We've opened 40 new hospitals. Um, and the reason that we've done that is because the Labor Party closed and sold off 117 schools when they were last in government, including one in my area that housed the Gough Whitlam Library. So that nothing was sacred under the Labor Party. And who did they sell it to? They sold it to property developers. J Jason, yes, uh, I just want to move on from, from infrastructure for, for a moment. Um, the front page of The Australian this morning talks about a, a new push from the federal government to try to improve Australia's image overseas yeah. because there can be a perception sometimes that we're a bit sleepy and a bit boring and a little bit dull. And one thing that has contributed to that <laughs> yes. is Sydney's lockout laws. Yes. Is our attitude, is the decline of live music in this city? Is yes. the decline of festivals in New South Wales? Yep. And there are rumblings within the government itself and within the coalition. Yeah. Are we losing young people? Is the government just uncool? Is it killing nightlife? Um, well, Josh, I, I absolutely... I think I agree with your premise. And um, a re-elected uh, Berejiklian government, if that's to happen, that's in the hands of the people, I really think need to revisit the lockout laws. I really think need to come Why doesn't up with the Premier it. just say that? Um, well... Look, I think it's a process that they're working through. It was obviously these lockout laws were introduced when someone died um, and there was a bit of a media um, hype about it. So uh, sometimes hard cases make for hard laws and it is time to review those laws. Um, I believe, as you mentioned, that people inside the government largely believe that as well. It probably isn't something that should be discussed or developed uh, policy during an election campaign where people are being you know, hypercritical and looking for political advantage. It should be done calmly. Same with music festivals. And look, the live music scene in New South Wales is something that needs to be looked at very, very seriously. And we need to come up with good policies, um, regardless of which par party's in power. Because this didn't just happen in the last four or eight years. This has been going on for some time. Pat, is it time to revisit those policies? Well, uh, in, in my home city of Newcastle, the lockout laws have actually worked in terms of reducing violence and, and crime. So I don't want to talk about the centre of Sydney because I, I, I haven't seen the statistics, but in Newcastle, where we were the pilot, it has actually worked. But Labor's announced some really exciting policies around live music venues and, um, and, and looking at increasing safety at uh, music festivals. So we do need to uh, get the balance right. And Labor's been very progressive about policies around live music. Um, which is really important. And I just want to get back to an earlier point where Jason just lied about our policies. We're putting in an extra $2.7 billion into schools. We've committed a 5,500 more nurses into hospitals. Where the party is actually committed to, on education and health, all the uh, Liberal Party can do is sigh like Jason just did then. And I noticed he couldn't answer my question about a single infrastructure project that's been opened by this government. They've been in power for eight years and all they've done is destroy things, rip things up and not build anything. And it's pretty rich of Jason to talk about ICAC when uh, there were 10 Hunter and Central Coast Liberal MPs who had to go through ICAC. We had mass resignations so, and they lost a Premier because of ICAC. So it's pretty rich of Jason to uh, think that the voters of New South Wales uh, forgot the last eight chaotic years.
Jason, a very quick response. We are running out of time. Well, I'm sorry about that you're running out of time. I don't think the um, people of New South Wales have forgotten about Eddie O'Bead, Ian McDonald. Eddie O'Bead, who Michael Daly thanked in his first speech. Eddie O'Bead, whose house was, what about Chris had a Hartra, DA, mate? was a how's DA how's approved. Going? Chris, I know, I know you how's want to Hartra talk over the top going? of how's me, Andrew Pat, Cornwall because going? the fact of the how's matter Owen is going? you don't want me to talk about Eddie O'Bead, you don't want me to talk about Ian McDonald, you don't want to talk well, to me about, about the Hartra lies and corruptions and the incompetence of the Labor Party for the last eight years under MP. Bob Carr, Bob Carr and Christina <laughs> Keneally. And let's, put, and let's not forget this, Michael Daly approved Eddie O'Bead's DA when he was on council and he didn't declare it. These are the sorts of stories that should have been covered during the, this election campaign and have been ignored. Well, voters will decide today. Pat hey, Conroy, Jason Polinski, we've run out of time. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for your time. You, you guys are rich. You really <laughs> are. I mean, you guys, you guys, people wonder why there's disillusionment with politics sometimes oh, and uh, squabbling over old issues may be one of the reasons. Uh, Do I get to respond to that or not? <laughs>